Hey y'all, Daddy Guy here, and I'm back from an unusual hiatus of Airflow updates. Um, after Airf the release of Airflow 3.0, there's kind of an extended six month development cycle versus the normal quarter re releases for new incremental updates. Um, but 3.1 has finally arrived, uh, and it is a banger. Um, we have a ton of cool new features really centered around human in the loop pipelines. Uh, and also better monitoring and efficiency of existing pipelines um, for things like time uh, and other characteristics rather than just, hey, did it succeed or did it fail? Um, also upgrading the UI a bit as well um, to you know just bring back some of the features that were removed with the move to the new UI. Um, and now we are going to uh, start building them back in in this new UI. Um, and as you can see, you know we also, with the new UI, you have a lot more flexibility to add new things um, with React plugins. So a lot of cool new developments there. But what you're seeing right here is actually the first feature I wanna talk about. Um, and this is a human in the loop data pipeline, right? And so essentially what's happening here is, you know, we have, hey, AI is going to generate a pizza in this silly flow. Um, and then after it's generated a pizza, we're gonna have a human come in the loop and say, hey, does this look like a pizza I want to eat? Um, so it's going to go in, look at this recipe that was generated by AI and either say, hey, this looks like a good pizza or this looks terrible and no human would ever eat this um, and then move down to deliver pizza. Uh, and the reason why this feature was added is because a lot of AI workflows that are starting to be you know, run with Airflow as part of production pipelines require some kind of human monitoring, some kind of human response to actually proceed because in a business enterprise setting, letting an AI just run wild and uh, generate its own responses unchecked is a recipe for disaster and a recipe for ending up in the news for the next big AI black swan event. Um, so having human and loop data pipelines for really anything that's you know critical like fraud detection or you know obviously proving pizzas isn't a typical critical use case, but anything where you know you need a human to immediately verify the output of an AI, you know maybe you're using an AI agent for data analysis, right? You want to verify that that analysis is actually valid. Um, you can have a human come in and approve that before it you know, gets populated and sent out to downstream reportees. Um, so really excited that this has been added to uh, Airflow. I think it opens up a lot of new possibilities for more creative workflows where you have a human provide that kind of live response. Um, and so excited to see where it continues to get developed and new features that uh, get built into it as well. Now, the next big new change um, are the re-edition of the Gantt chart and uh, calendar views. So now if you, had worked with Airflow Thread you would have noticed that uh, if you go to this options menu um, under a specific DAG run, so if I select this here, you'll see I have my Gantt chart now pop up. Um, this was previously a separate tab and actually was removed. Um, but now you can see if you select any DAG run, you will then see the corresponding Gantt chart. So, you know, showing you how long your tasks are running for. Super useful feature when trying to debug, hey, you know, I have this really long running pipeline, where is, you know, actually taking the most time. Um, and then additionally, you not only have the Gantt chart back, but you also have the calendar view. So if you go back out to just your uh, total DAG object, right? Um, so then if I go over to your two calendar, you can see, so here on the calendar view, you know, you have I move my fat head here. You can see you have now one success because um, I'm using a green screen. The green of the Airflow UI shows up as black here. That's why you're seeing that. Um, but now you have a much improved calendar view that will show you for you know each date um, within the calendar. You know, hey, every hour block, were there any runs, and if there were you know runs, how many runs there actually were. Um, and you can obviously filter this for a, a total or failed runs. You can also go to just a daily view, which gives you obviously a much greater view of the calendar. Um, and it's just, again, a much better calendar view than before, um, much more functional. And then, you know, if I click into, you know, one of these, I can see, hey, which runs those were. Um, and you also obviously have all the other normal airflow information here as well. Uh, but generally just, you know, kind of two quality of life ports over from, hey, these were already here in Airflow, let's bring them back um, in this new React world where it's easier to add and customize um, and also make these better if you wanna customize them for yourself. Now, another really cool addition, uh, particularly for those of you that are not, you know, based in US or don't speak English or speak another language, there's now much better international language support. Uh, so this will actually automatically trigger based on which region Airflow detects it's deployed in, you know, based on time zones, but if you want to manually choose it, you can go down to a select language and you can see we now have 
uh, 17 different languages, including uh, Catala, which was quite a controversial language, actually, if you were keeping up to date with the Airflow dev channel. Uh, but generally, a lot of the major languages that you'll see out there represented um, here, and, you know, Spanish, French, German, Italian, you know, all, all the all the big ones, um, well, probably not all the big ones, I'm sure there's some that aren't here, um, I think Chinese as well, um, but I am not super good with languages, so I'm not sure what the characters are there. Um, in general, though, just much better to have, you know, hey, official framework and a lot more language support out of the box. Then you can go and download language packs now or, you know, customizations to add your own language here as well. Again, one of the benefits of that more flexible React framework is it makes it a lot easier to add these additional features uh, like this one. So super glad to see this added and, you know, bringing more people into the wonderful world of Airflow. Now, next, I'm bringing it over into the code view to show you our next feature I want to talk about, which is the new deadline alert. Um, and these are effectively SLAs for Airflow DAGs. So they're configurable alerts that will trigger when a DAG exceeds different time thresholds. So you have three reference points right now, um, which is the queued time, so the amount of time a DAG run was queued for, uh, the logical date, so has a DAG finished by a logical date, or uh, is it has it been done within a certain amount of time? Um, so in time delta, you know, two hours, right? How long was this? Did this DAG take? Um, and the notification system it uses are the you know just async callbacks. So Slack webhook notifier, same callbacks that you use for you know DAG success, DAG failure. But now you have this new deadline alert you can create, um, which allows you to capture failures that aren't you know, triggered by a success or trigger alerts that aren't triggered by success or failure um, and then have them fire out to your existing notification channels. So it lets you allocate resources, you know, obviously ahead of time before you get explicit failures um, and also avoids, you know, you having just kind of long running DAGs that get stuck in a queued state or get stuck in some kind of running state um, where they're just taking up a worker slot, but they're not actually ever failing or succeeding, um, which means that you can't ever actually fix them. Um, and, and traditionally in Airflow, this is a huge problem, right? Because you have, you know, DAGs or tasks that hang um, and, you know, it slows down your entire environment. And especially over time, if you're running a lot of DAGs and, you know, just have a couple that get stuck in that state every day, they'll accumulate over time. So really nice quality of life to have this built into uh, core Airflow now, instead of just being something, you know, people have to build on top of it, like, you know, things like Astro Observe. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the official release of the new plugin framework for Airflow plugins. Um, so now you actually have the uh, modern pr plugin framework that replaced that old Flask-based framework. So you can embed any kind of React applications, custom external links. You can extend API server if you have, you know, fast. You want to add new fast API sub applications, um, and really gives you a lot more flexibility, and also makes it a lot easier to customize Airflow. Um, so you know, right now you have kind of a fun example, right, where someone's actually embedded the Snake game uh, into uh, into Airflow, right? So you could have a little Snake game for your data engineers to play. But more practically, this is where you'd want to have things like, hey, maybe I want to embed a custom, custom dashboard into the Airflow UI, um, or I want to extend Airflow's API to meet my specific kind of workflows. You know, I want to have maybe some custom fields added or removed or default set. Um, and also maybe I want to create different interfaces for different user roles. Maybe I have a simplified business user, user interface that's just a dashboard versus, you know, a full insight view for my data engineers. Um, and so really just showing how flexible Airflow has become in terms of the plugins that it is able to support. Um, and this is really, you know, all because of that move from Flask to a React-based web application, which is much more aligned with modern development practices and also means that a lot of the code that people are developing out externally can be ported into Airflow without a ton of additional customization. Now, there are also some really cool under the scene, under the hood improvements. Um, there is now a new streaming API endpoint, so you can actually have other applications wait on the state of a DAG run. Um, so instead of having a push workflow where you know the DAG triggers and sends an alert out, you can have a watcher that is actually going to watch the status of a DAG run and can pull an endpoint to check and say, you know, I want to uh, check the endpoint uh, or check this DAG run status and see how it's progressed. Um, you also have Python 3.31 support, so removed Python 3.9 hit into life. Python 3.13 is now supported as well. Um, you also have some improvements to the task SDK, but not really anything super uh, relevant right now other than just like, hey, we've changed where how you're pulling it. Um, and you know, in the future, I think there's gonna be a lot of developments in this space, but right now, not really. Um, and then you also have um, right up here, 
you have some other improvements for now pinning your favorite DAGs. Um, so, you know, just really very much quality of life, just things that, you know, we've uncovered from people working with Airflow um, and are now built into the product. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.